Early last year, we appealed for your help to catch the killer of Simon Holdsworth. He had been working around the clock to save for his wedding to his fiancée, Carleen, when, just a week before Christmas in 2013, he was murdered. Martin has been back to Sheffield to find out how traditional detective work and meticulous CCTV analysis enable police to catch his killer. I came to this field on the outskirts of Sheffield last year as police investigated the murder of Simon Holdsworth. The 36-year-old was attacked as he made his way home from work. With no obvious motive and little forensic evidence, detectives faced a huge challenge as they hunted for his killer. He was a very, very bubbly character. Yeah, very friendly. Um, he's He's a great person to talk to, great person to, to laugh with. He really took the role of, of being a dad, um, which was very important to me. Um, yeah, he was, he was a lovely, a lovely man. The couple had been working long hours to save for their wedding the following year. He was very good at his job. We was training him to be more of a team leader. You know, we felt he got potential to send the progress in the company. Um, that was because of his uh, personality, that we felt he could draw people and people wanted to respond to him. On the night of his murder, Simon had clocked off just before 11 p.m. He caught his usual bus to the playing fields near his house from where he always took a shortcut home. His body was found by a passerby early the next morning. Uh, Simon had multiple head injuries uh, that, that we believe had been caused by a weapon. There was no obvious sign of a struggle. Simon didn't present any defensive injuries. It's clear that, uh, that Simon didn't stand a chance from this attack. It was just numb, just absolute numbness. I, I couldn't take it in at all. Um, I still can't take it in now. You know, you still expect him to walk through the door. Simon's work colleagues were also in shock, but tried to help police as much as they could. Everybody brainstormed to, to try and remember what had actually happened, where they were, what people had said. Um, and we spent a lot of time as a group together chatting through this. Meanwhile, police were searching the crime scene for clues. Simon's gold chain and phone were missing. Had the killer stolen them? But their first break came from CCTV at the nearby school. This grainy camera footage from the night of the murder showed a car parking near the field. A blurry figure then walked in. A short time later, another person, now known to be Simon, also entered the field. This coincides with when he got off the bus. Chillingly, only one person was seen to leave. Police were sure this was the moment when Simon was killed. Could the driver of this car have been his killer? CCTV taken from a nearby bus showed a clearer image. Experts were brought in to find out more. From our initial blind analysis, we were able to determine that the vehicle was either a Mark IV Vauxhall Astra or a Mark V Ford Escort. It was obvious that the uh, headlights of the vehicle were not functioning correctly. Um, there was an unusual pattern on the road. Uh, it looked as if the lights were incorrect or damaged or misaligned or that some of the, the front lights were not functioning. It certainly appeared in all of the CCTV images that we looked at that either the, the same vehicle or, or a very, very similar vehicle was, was present in each case. Detectives checked the cars of everyone in Simon's home and work life. 
Only one person owned this type of vehicle. Sean Wainwright drove a Mark IV Astra, which had faulty tail and headlights. He'd been working with Simon at the factory for more than a year. We have a statement off Sean Wainwright. He says he leaves uh, before Simon and he makes his way straight home, uh, a journey of a couple of miles, which takes him five or six minutes to, to complete. We check that out. And what we find is uh, uh, in a number of CCTV cameras that his vehicle is not there at the time that he says he is. Uh, we do get the vehicle arriving home 40 minutes after Wainwright says he is. Uh, that causes us to be really suspicious and, and look even more closely at Sean Wainwright. Police also discovered that Wainwright had been one of the first to visit the crime scene, even laying a wreath on behalf of the factory. In fact, he had visited the field no less than 11 times after Simon's murder. In January 2014, Wainwright was arrested and interviewed. I have nothing to do with the murder of Simon Oldsworth. Nothing. Okay. He was a very good friend of mine. A very good friend. And although the blurry CCTV footage suggested he might be the driver of the mystery car, the evidence wasn't strong enough to charge him. You've asked me the same question. He was released on bail while officers continued their work. Simon Holdsworth was looking forward to getting married this year. Still lacking the crucial evidence to prove beyond doubt who was the killer, detectives appealed for the help of Crime Watch viewers. That vehicle is of massive significance in this investigation. It's important that I trace who's in that vehicle and what that vehicle is. That CCTV footage would again prove critical. The image experts conducted a controlled reconstruction. Wainwright's Astra was among four vehicles that were driven past each camera. They then compared these images with the original footage. Having looked at the vehicle make model and the aftermarket features and a number of acquired features on the vehicle, such as the damage to the lighting, we concluded that it, it was practically impossible for the vehicle that was seen at that time to be any other than Wainwright's vehicle. Detectives could now prove Wainwright had been at the crime scene that night. But what had happened to Simon's belongings? During 16 hours of interview, Wainwright gave a detailed account of his movements. But he had missed out an important fact and CCTV would again be his undoing. This footage shows him just hours after Simon's body was found, selling a gold chain that was later melted down. Wainwright had tried to cover his tracks by giving the shop a false address. We believe that chain was Simon's, and that's why he omitted to tell us. All the evidence now pointed to Wainwright, but what was his motive? The answer lay in the crucial witness testimonies from workmates. They said Wainwright had told them that on the night of Simon's murder, he tried to get back into the factory after forgetting his wallet. Employees who had worked previously with Wainwright also spoke of how he often used violence to settle minor work disputes. What do you mean by that? We know that uh, Sean Wainwright left, his car is caught on CCTV footage, leaving work five minutes before Simon. And we believe Wainwright's come back and asked Simon to open up to get his wallet. Simon's a supervisor, and he said no, because he's going home. Now oh, forget it. Not liking that answer, uh, Wainwright has then driven the three miles or so to where he knows that Simon lives. Wainwright laid in wait. Wainwright carried out a brutal attack. He took from Simon's dying body a chain and a phone. 
He then callously made his way back to his car and left, uh, leaving Simon to die in that field. Last month, after a three-week trial, Sean Wainwright was convicted of the murder of Simon Holdsworth. He will serve a minimum of 28 years. Sean Wainwright uh, revealed himself in our investigation to be a callous bully, and it's staggering that uh, someone could do that much damage to an individual over a petty work dispute. The horrific events of that night will never go away. No punishment can ever fit that night. And uh, Simon no longer being with his family or selves. It's still hard now to, to think that he's not coming back. Just got to remember him in the best way and remember him how Simon would want to be remembered, which is living life to the full, you know, enjoying life and, and having a good home and a good family and working hard and... He just, he just loved his family so much. And he'll always be missed, always. It's just such a sad case, isn't it? At least justice was served there. It's time now for a last check on what's coming tonight on the phones. Here's Martin. Kirsty, we've had...